Hi, this is my electric car, which is 1988 Solek F-Quart, based on the Ford Escort. It originally had 18 6-volt lead-acid golf cart batteries, but 12 years ago I converted it to lithium-iron phosphate. Lithium batteries have a lot of advantages. They're lighter, cleaner, and much more durable. But the one big disadvantage is that they can be easily ruined by either overcharging or over-discharging. So it's essential to have a battery manager to prevent that. So I installed an Orion BMS. It has two interfaces for monitoring battery data, both of which use the CAN bus protocol. One goes through a CAN bus to USB adapter to a laptop running a special Windows program, and that's what I've been using all this time. But it's not ideal. I have to boot off the computer each time, and it occupies the passenger seat and consumes a significant amount of power. Another way to monitor the data is through an Android app called Torque. Torque is designed to interface with the OBD2 onboard diagnostic connector of any modern vehicle and extract performance data. It requires a Bluetooth adapter that plugs into the OBD2 socket in the car and communicates with Android via Bluetooth. So we're going to try to set that up here. Okay, next step is to install Torque. Of course, it's in the Google Play Store here. And it doesn't have to be an active phone. Any phone you can connect by Wi-Fi to your router. So let's uh, just search for Torque here. And there it is. So you just need to press install. And uh, it'll ask you for a credit card. It costs $4.95. And then you're ready to go. Torque is pre-programmed to monitor dozens of standard parameters, none of which we're really interested in. The ones we want are pretty much custom-defined parameters specific to the BMS. Orion has a downloadable list of available parameters, so we just need to select the ones we want and load the data entries into the Torque app. We'll need to enter the long name, the short name, which is the label on the gauge, and the parameter ID code in hexadecimal. Then there's an equation that translates the stream data into the parameter we want to display, then the maximum and minimum values on the gauge, and finally the units. Okay, let's add a gauge for the highest cell voltage. Go to Settings, Manage Extra PIDs, Menu, Add custom PID and enter the PID code, which is 22F0333. Long name, highest cell voltage. Short name. High cell volt. Minimum is 0, 0.0. Maximum is 5.0. Scale factor is 1. Units are volts. And then the equation, which is double parentheses A times 256 plus B divided by 10,000. And that's it. All the other stuff we just leave blank. OK. And there it is now in the list. And then to make a gauge for it, we go to real-time information. Now there are seven possible screens to show data. 
So we just have to go to whichever screen we want the gauge to appear on. And let's this screen go back to the settings. Now add display, uh, whatever display we want. I like the half dial with a needle. And then we just have to go down the list of parameters and find the one we want. And they're in alphabetical order, so. So here it is, highest cell voltage. Size of display, let's make it medium. And there it is, and just move it wherever you want it on the screen. And one last thing, these gauges, when it shows the value, the default is to have just one decimal point. That's obviously not enough for a single cell voltage. So we have to alter that. I'll hold this down. Go to display configuration. Number of decimal places. And we want, let's say, two. And we're done. Now we need an OBD Bluetooth adapter to link to the cell phone. The Torque website lists a number of recommended adapters, and they have one thing in common. They all cost at least $100. The Torque site discourages you from using a BLE or Bluetooth low energy adapter because the response isn't fast enough. But I'm interested mostly in monitoring battery condition, so I don't really need a lightning fast response. And anyway, I know a guy who uses this LE link adapter in his Nissan Leaf, and it works fine for him, so I'm going to give this a try. The BMS comes with just a bare cable for the OBD2 connection, so you need to wire in your own socket. But only five of the 16 pins are used. Here's the view from the front of the OBD2 socket. Pin 4 is the chassis ground, and pin 5 is the signal ground. Pin 6 and 14 are the CAN bus signal, and pin 16 is the positive 12 volt power for the Bluetooth adapter. So I connect the BMS to the uh, Bluetooth adapter. Got this replacement OBD2 socket with wire stubs to each terminal. And just the connections are all soldered and then shrink wrap. So here's the, here's the power cable. Uh, for now, I'm just going to use a, a cigarette lighter plug. Plug that into the uh, DC auxiliary outlet in the car. Eventually, I'll, I'll hardwire this in. So that's the uh, negative going to uh, pin 4, which is the chassis ground. And then the positive, plus 12 volts, going to... Uh, Pin 16, the power input. And then this is the uh, CAN bus cable coming from the BMS. So there's three connections here, the shield, the CAN high connection, and the CAN low connection. So the shield is going to pin 5, the signal ground. Red is the CAN high going to pin 6. And black here is can low going to pin 14. Now there's two CAN bus cables coming from the BMS. One is terminated, one is unterminated. The terminated one I'm already using for the uh, USB connection to the computer. So, so this is the unterminated uh, cable. And theoretically, you're supposed to have 120 ohm resistors at each end of the cable. But if I want to put a 120 ohm uh, at the BMS, I'd have to cut the cable and splice. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to try just putting one 120 ohm resistor uh, here at, at this end of the cable. Okay, so that's all wired up, and we just have to uh, plug in the adapter here and, and give it a try.
Okay, we're charging from some solar panels here, so see if this thing will work. Plug it into the power here. Well, it's getting power. Okay, first we have to connect to the adapter, so settings, adapter settings, uh, choose the device, and there it is, it's just one. And now we should be connected. Try to connect. Ah, there it is. So we got the uh, state of charge, pack voltage, lowest cell, highest cell, the lowest temperature, we're charging it 0.2 amps and here I have the four uh, individual temperature sensors these are in the rear battery pack these are in the front battery pack so here I've set out to monitor each individual cell in the pack and incidentally there seems to be an error in the PID table all of these are formulae should be divided by 10,000. Uh, if you do that, you get reasonable voltages. If you don't, it'll tell you that your cell has 33,000 volts. There's also a graphing function, but the time scale is only 10 seconds and Seems like you can't adjust that, so not uh, not really terribly useful. So that's all the information I need, really. A lot of it is to uh, see if the batteries are warm enough to charge, and, and they are, and just to measure the uh, charging rate. I was curious how much power this thing uses. So I've uh, spliced in an ammeter here, and we're on the 200 milliamp scale. So just connect the power here. And looks like we're using 30 milliamps. Of course, that's just resting. Let's uh, let's activate the program. So there it is communicating. And now it's drawing about 35 milliamps. So only 5 milliamps difference between resting and communicating. That's a little bit less than I thought it would be. Now there is supposed to be an automatic off feature where it will automatically turn off when the car turns off and, and not draw any power. I haven't figured out how to get that to work. I couldn't find any information on it. Uh, if anybody knows, let me know in, in the comments. So, so not a terrible power draw, but probably wouldn't want to leave this 
plugged into the uh, accessory battery when the car is not running. So I'm curious what the speed of the response is here since uh, it's supposed to be slow with these low energy adapters. So I've just got the car parked in, in high. I'm just going to ride the clutch here and get a current reading and see what the response is. So that's not so bad, several readings per second, and uh, certainly plenty fast for me. So now we're outside the car, and that little green dot shows that we're still receiving data. So I'd be interested to know what the range of this uh, Bluetooth is. So we're about 50 feet from the car now and it looks like we're still receiving data here. Okay, that's about a hundred feet away. And looks like we're still receiving. Okay, so that's a hundred and fifty feet away. And finally looks like it's stopped. So maybe a hundred foot range, that's more than I expected. Okay, let's see if we can use Torque to detect and clear trouble codes in the BMS. So using the computer, we can see that we've got uh, one trouble code, P0A80, and that's a weak cell, number 15. So looking on torque here, let's try fault codes. And there it is, P0A80. Of course it doesn't tell you what it is. Well, let's try to clear faults. All sorts of warnings. But let's clear it. And now going back to the computer, we see that the fault has disappeared. No weak cells. So certainly we can detect and clear uh, trouble codes with Torque. We just have to know what each code stands for. But anyway, that's Torque with the Orion BMS. Uh, some things you can't do with it. You can't uh, program your charging algorithm. But as far as day-to-day -day operation, pretty much all you need. And pretty cheap and easy to set up. Thanks for watching.